Okay, so two students are sitting in the quad, a Samoan and a Tongan. Samoan says to the Tongan, sorry man, what do you used to write your assignments on? Microsoft Word? And the Tongan says, nah, I use Google Docs. Nothing gives you that firecracker quite like doing stand-up. Like, if you ever want to do stand-up, if you ever want to scare yourself, go do some stand-up. It's not something that I ever said, oh, this is what I'm going to do. I actually, in fact, when I was at drama school, uh, a little running joke with my friends is that I was going to be the most intense Pacific Island actor the world has ever seen. <laughs> well, we were working on at drama school, just being real intense, getting all that emotion and just bearing it to, like, to a look. Yeah, I don't know if it's working. Huh? She's speaking pigeon. Now, you don't have Hamas one day picking and blow me to plan on me. We'll be right. Any pigeon I know is. Here we go. Love you, Kerry. Fussy, I lied. I'm not pregnant. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that, was, that was quite an experience when Melanie goes, hey, Fussy, got a character for you in the show. Action! <laughs> Uh, you play an actor named Fussy, and you go into stand-up because your acting sucks, but you're really bad at stand-up. And I was like, that sounds like the worst idea ever. Fussy Chua. Good evening, lady and gentlemen. My name's Fussy Chua. Uh, my friends call me Fussy for short, but I'm not really. I uh, just know what I like. What we learned by doing that show, especially using our own names and our own stories from our lives to sort of feed that, is that eventually it ends up becoming fake because in real life you only get one chance because the reality is I never would have said half those things on that show. <laughs> you know, like, you don't get two takes at life, you just get the one and you go for it. So um, I've been cast in this uh, TV cop show. Oh, Police Den 7. Uh, no. I am a brown actor in a predominantly white country, um, so you know, that might sound like a negative thing, but it's also quite liberating to know exactly what box you fit in. Hey, just your mouth, get out of here. Oh, I don't think so, buddy. We're the neo Asian Panthers and we're here to stay. Being an actor, being in this industry is the only job that you're allowed to be racist, sexist, noseist. You know, if your head's too big, no job. Nose too big, no job. You know, if you're too tall, you're too short, you're too this, you know, that's the only job that is, that's allowed to exist. Are we auditioning for the same commercial? Yeah. Oh. Hey, the role of homeowner. Um, I think I think we'll go for Will as homeowner. It's just a, a bit more realistic. It's an ongoing thing. Um, and being a brown guy that sounds like a white guy, that throws another spanner in the mix. So, you know, consequently I do a lot of a lot more voice work because no one can tell that you're brown even if you sound white. Yeah, he was always different because there's five of us, so we had to pair up. And uh, I paired up with my older brother, and uh, Dom here paired up with the younger brother, and so we still had to do his own thing. My own thing, i just like to add in there that my own thing was doing whatever mum was doing. So uh, my own thing was doing the dishes, uh, doing the laundry, and doing the vacuum. That was my own thing. That's what happens when you are the odd number, not better. We're all born in Wellington. Um, but then Dad decided uh, he was going to be a minister, so he uh, took the first job that came up that he thought was exciting, and that was in uh, Pleasant Point in South Canterbury. So we ended up being in the whitest town uh, in all of uh, South Canterbury for five years. Yeah, that's why I sound like this. It was interesting because we were the only like brown guys in the in the district, so it was kind of new for for these white people. They thought we were really good at rugby because <laughs> of that size, but I suck at rugby. Like, I was probably the biggest. Brown did scare the ball down there. <laughs> so if anyone in the family is going to do anything crazy, it's going to be me. So uh, no one was surprised that I was going to drama school, getting into acting. Therefore, every crazy thing that I do while I've been an actor, everyone just goes, oh yeah, that's, that's for sure again. Okay, now there are two things that happened to me here. Number one, I realise I'm late meeting my fiance, Sia. Oh. Number two. <laughs> It doesn't even have this lead in there, like for store it just gets wasted by, by an ambulance. And then it just kind of cuts to the sexy. We're all like gathered at the family home and I get a call and I go, hey, we're about to see you, we're, the, the show's about to start. You go, oh, I'm, I'm watching it at Dave's. And I was like, why are you watching it at Dave's? And then the scene comes on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure no old man wants to watch their son do it there. <laughs> you know, it's a private moment. <laughs> there is a question that get asked a lot. Because people go, oh, your dad's a minister. What does he feel, how does he feel about that? And to be quite honest, I didn't, it never crossed my mind because if you stay in church and you listen closely enough to a lot of the messages they have the year in, year out, 
It was talking about take up your cross, you know, everyone's got a cross to bear, you know, even if that means copping a whole lot of flack from people, that's my cross to bear. This is what I do, this is my service to the world, so I don't really care what you think, you know, I'm just gonna do it.